Today I'm showing you my best build for the Necromancer. I have about a 90% win rate with this build so far. Any game that I did lose came down to the wire. Just the team was incredibly good and got the pieces very quickly. Other than that, I have won all my games. You can see my level at 38 already. I have four max characters, another one, but let's get into this build. So this build is a lot of damage and you're going to rush with it. Now Necromancer is incredibly good late game. It's going to be insanely hard to close out an early game. But what wins games? I'll do another video more in depth on that, but the short answer is getting a down or getting a kill within about the first six, seven minutes of the game. If you can do that and then you can get another one within like the next three, four minutes, you are going to rank up and be very powerful. So how do we get that down or kill? We need damage. We need damage on our enemies. Now, skeletons have very low balance bar. They're easy to execute. So we're going to be increasing the balance of them. We're going to be raising the health I'm not going to get into whether they're elite or basic. We need it on both. So as you can see here, we have more balance. Now, this right here is because we do need to set the traps up. We're going to be rushing, trying to find them as quickly as possible. We need, when we find them, as we're setting the traps up, sometimes we need to go take a loop around for like 10, 15 seconds and gather energy. And it's very important that we optimize the first six, seven minutes of the game. So when we do need more energy and we're trying to get them before they can retreat, um, this comes in handy. It's only 20%, but it comes in clutch. So many games comes in clutch. The boss definitely needs the balance bar. Most often when you're playing the boss of the Necromancer, you are going to be beat due to balance damage, not actually health damage. So 100% this is a must. Moving on, we're gonna take more health of the basic unit. We need to not really progress this tree, um, but there is like some stuff we want in it. So we'll take the one here. We'll take the skeletons attack more frequently because we're gonna spawn so many. We'll take the extra duration so when we're spamming on like the healers, uh, they can't heal. And we'll increase the skeletons. Now this section right here is probably the least four needed in the build. If you wanted, really wanted, you could slot that over to somewhere else, like reducing the amount of energy to place portals so you can spam them a little bit faster. But I've noticed that's just not an issue. So I just take the 10% and not go up to the 15 or the 25 going to be taking a little bit extra fear on the dash because we need to get to the 10 for the portal. Going to be taking the Necromancer Cry only because going to be taking the test of time. The longer if they make it to the objective, which they'll generally make it to the first objective at least. The longer duration time really does help out. Coming stronger is okay. Um, generally, you only resurrect once as the boss anyway, and you only re resurrect a little bit unless you're in like a building or something and you're actually able to get that ability off. But we're taking that more because we need the include uh, increase the flute effect range. The standard range sucks, but this 180 feet is pretty beast and allows you to buff your characters. If you can hide your flute, which you can in some battles very well, you're going to force one player to go around and flank. And sometimes it's very hard to do. And any team that doesn't immediately go for the flank, you can just spam in skeletons and generally overwhelm them, overwhelm them because your skeletons are buffed and they already got really bu good buffs even before that buff. So that range comes in clutch if you get your uh flute on the board for like 15 seconds you're gonna fuck shit up next up we will be taking the healing on evil ash so if you can evade and if you can play the necromancer boss well 
then this healing right here, just occasionally using this, you're going to run your boss down from spirit. You're going to have basically as much time on your boss as you have spirit, which is very nice. Um, the charge duration right here and the extra large trident smash is basically just to get the improved healing on the boss. So as mentioned, we went over that one. We're going to skip over these three. They're not that good. You shouldn't really be throwing the trident. Um, we're going to be taking the increased effect area range. Also because if you don't take this perk, it just doesn't seem to work well at all. Um, and sometimes doesn't work. So this one might be kind of needed actually. I was thinking about taking it off and just trying it without the range, but... The range without this sucks, so um, at least level 1. The 10 feet difference doesn't really make that big of a deal, and definitely going to be going for more damage instead. You could reduce the, the range if you're really big on this, or you want to add more health to the boss, or you want to add here, but I do not recommend that. What I recommend is taking more damage on the elites, more damage on the basic units, and more damage on the boss. This is a very good build. Uh, I basically never lose at the moment. Um, I haven't come across too many like all 425 teams, but when I come across those very hard uh, teams to fight, this still holds it on. Uh, it holds its own. If I do lose, it comes down to the wire. I have like at least one to two dead in the final battle, and I just can't kill the book or I can't get them down before it ends. Like, I don't lose by much with this build right here. So, that is my best build for the Necromancer. I hope that helps.